Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be talking about my ileostomy and everything to do with it. We're going to talk about the op, we're going to talk about the recovery, we're going to talk about poo, we're going to talk about farts and you're all going to love it. <laughs> to the channel, my name is Luke, and this is Luke's world. It's gonna consist of some dodgy things, uh, some laughs, and most of all, it's gonna talk about, we're gonna talk a lot about my ileostomy. We're gonna talk about all the future. Uh, there's gonna be babies, there's gonna be cars, there's, there's amazing things. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop me a comment and let me know you're new. Now I'm on 72 subscribers, and I know a lot of you guys have sort of joined in to find out about my operation. So. This video is going to be, like I said, to talk about it. Now, don't get me wrong, the operation is horrible. It's not a nice operation to talk about, but I feel personally that more people in the UK, in the USA, in Australia, I don't care where you are, you should be talking about it because the more people that know about it, the easier it is because you talk about it, then they go, oh yeah, my mum's friend had that and then she did this and then... I don't know, you might find out that someone really close to you knows someone that's had it and then you make friendships out of it and uh, you find that information that might help you. Also, if you are an IBD sufferer, I do think this video may be very important to you because the reality is we all know that it could happen. Um, I t was told, no, it won't happen until you're 40 and it happened in the next year. So. If you are an IBD sufferer, don't avoid it. Please do your research. Please click on this video and find out what's going on about it. Because I will do my best. I'm not a surgeon. I'm not a doctor. I have medical qualifications, but I'm I'm by no means knowledgeable enough to sort of lecture people. If you do have questions, I will do my best to answer them. Just drop them down in the comment section, and I'll do my best. I, I promise. Now... On with the video. So my operation was eight hours long. Now, it's on the notes, it only said that it was 300 minutes. Now, 300 minutes is five hours. Yes, it's five hours. Mine was at eight. Now, there was a few complications during the surgery. Um, unfortunately, I went tachycardic. If you don't know what tachycardic is, it's when your heart beats too fast. So, I was almost 200 beats per minute, um, which is breaching on going into VF, which is ventricular fibrillation, um, which is commonly known as cardiac arrest. Now, that is terrifying. For me, it was terrifying, I would imagine, for my mum, who was waiting for me. Um, but this was because, they think, because I'd never had an operation before, um, and they removed a considerable amount of my colon. So the amount of colon they removed was two, it weighed 2.5 kilograms um, and was the length of five feet. Now, this is because it was my large bowel. It wasn't a small, it wasn't a little bit. It was 90% of my colon. Now, that's a lot. Um, and for the fact that I recovered in shy of seven days, I mean, the only reason I kept there was because of obs and observations. So, as you can imagine, I was pretty shocked to find out that they, that's how big it was. Um, yeah, it's one of the largest organs in the body, and it's gone. I don't have it anymore, and I'm fine. So, they removed that. Um, after eight hours, I was out. I was with mum up on the ward. Um, I don't really remember much of Wednesday. Sort of a bit of a blur. Um, I remember going up to surgery. I remember saying bye to mum. That was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I don't obviously remember the surgery. Um, I don't really remember coming out. I just remember waking up about 12 p.m. Um, in a bit of pain. Um, and then Jose, one of the nurses, came and gave me many painkillers many and I was in a happy place um, then Thursday came around um, and mum and Charlotte came to visit me and I was in a happy place then I was on phenadol phen 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 yeah phenol I was on phenol that doesn't still don't sound right but we're gonna roll with it phenol and uh, it was on a button which is called a PCA patient controlled anal analphegic yeah, big word. See, what that was is I could push a button and I'd get instant pain relief for for a while and then I'd have to push it again. But it was locked off for five minutes, so I couldn't just bang, 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 bang. It was like bang, five minutes later it unlocked so I could push it again. 
and I got into the habit of doing this a lot. I mean, in the first 24 hours, I've pushed it like every five minutes for 24 hours. Um, so I, on the Thursday, I was off my head, I literally so bad. Um, and I was talking about trees, I was talking about horrible, funny things. Um, but I do remember Charlotte coming to see me and the first, that was, Thursday was the first proper time that I saw um, my stoma. And it was about 40 millimeters in diameter, which is probably about that. Um, and it was probably that far away from my stomach, like skin on the outside. Uh, so it was pretty big and it was pretty scary to look at, as in, to be honest, it was terrifying to look at. So Charlotte and mum walked in as I was getting that changed and I don't know how they weren't sick or they didn't faint because I saw it and I was like, holy shit, I'm going to faint. <laughs> this is it. Ripperoni, pepperoni. But, I, and it hurt and I was crying. I spent a lot of my time in hospital were very emotional. Um, I don't know why. I, I just, it was just how I felt. Um, which I think is pretty normal, to be honest. Uh, Mum and Charlotte were there. Um, it all got changed. Even my mucus fiscula got changed. And yeah, I felt a bit better then I felt like okay right things are gonna start looking a bit better now Friday came uh, this Friday was the day that I sort of got my life back now that sounds very strange but when you're controlled by something that you don't even know is really there like you how many of you out there feel your colon how many of you feel it when Okay, you feel it when you've eaten a curry, you feel it when you need a poo, you feel it, yeah, you feel it, but how many of you know it's there all the time? I did. I knew it was there every minute of every day. Constant nagging pain. Every time I went to the toilet, it was constant blood. So I knew it was there. It had to go. It had to go. Friday was the day that I got my life back. I started walking and I started standing up straight and the pain wasn't there anymore. It was a different sort of pain, obviously, because I was two days prior to my op. Um, but I, I, I was walking, I, and I didn't need. To, I, did, I felt like I didn't need the toilet anymore. Then that was uh, amazing. And then Friday night, and this is where it all went a little bit wrong. Friday night came, and I was sat on my iPad watching a film. I was watching Bright. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's on Netflix. It was about a troll, and and he basically some. It was a gun scene, a shootout in it. Um, and someone jumped out and grabbed one of the good guys and it made me jump. Whether it was me jumping or it was me walking a lot that day or whatever, it managed to pull a stitch out on the lower part of my stoma. Uh, literally just one tiny, teeny, tiny stitch came out and it bled a lot. And I'm not even joking, it bled a lot. Um, and... I was woken up three times during the night covered in blood um, and if you've ever had an operation you'll know where I'm coming from when you when you think how scary that is it was absolutely utterly t terrifying like terrifying um, and it bled and bled and bled and bled we tried everything to stop it um, and then the stoma, stoma nurse came around no, she didn't come around. It was my consultant came around in the morning of Saturday and said to not worry about it and it would it would stop. Well, it did throughout the day. It, well, it was bleeding, but into the back. So I was like, yeah, great. Okay, this is shit, but I can remember it. Um, and then Sunday came. No, Saturday night came. Blood on me again. So I was covered in blood and poo. Very nice. And then Sunday did it again all day all night so this was getting really annoying now um and then jose or jose whatever came to my rescue again now i cannot stress to you enough guys enough if you have this operation and you're on e5 lower and you go to going to gray or green or pink or orange ward this guy is don't he's filipino and he is I cannot, it, without him, I probably wouldn't have come home as soon as I did. He helped me so much. He 
he stayed in my little cubicle bit with me for three and a half hours on Sunday night trying to stop this bleeding. And in the end, he got surgeons up and a surgeon just went, stitch, job done. Two days later, I went home. They only kept me in Mondays because to make sure that it wasn't going to bleed again. I would have gone home Monday without this bleeding. So Tuesday came and I came home. I felt amazing. It was great to be home. Um, and unfortunately, when I got home, I was getting really bad wind. Uh, it was horrendous. I think it was because of eating like, too much on, at home, which anyone's going to do after staying in hospital. Um, so I ate too much and I got really bad wind. And I'm still sort of waiting for that to stop. Like I eat something and I get really bad gas. It's really frustrating. But now we are three weeks on from my operation. Three weeks. How incredibly crazy is that? I go back to work next week. It's insane. And I feel so good. Like, I feel like I could walk the, I could walk the white. I feel like that. Obviously, I don't think I could. But that's how I feel. And I, I, I seriously cannot put into words how good this operation is. Like, it's incredible. Like, what the guys do, surgeons, nurses, doctors, everybody. You guys are actually incredible. And if anyone in my audience is a student nurse, student paramedic, student whatever... I have got so much respect for you, like, so much respect. You save lives every single day, every single day. Like, my operation saved my life, and in a weird way, because I felt so down, I felt so depressed about everything. I couldn't go anywhere without thinking, oh God, where's the toilet, where's the toilet, and having like mini breakdowns in my head, because there wasn't a toilet in a building. That's not fair. That's not, like, right. That's not human. It's not fair. And you guys fixed me. You sorted me out. You took away the bad and replaced it with something. Okay, yeah, I've got a dealt with shit hand. But I'm not dying. I haven't got cancer. This operation helps people with cancer. It takes that away. I can't stress this enough. If you do have irritable bowel disease, any of them, ask about this op because it will change your life. If, you're, if your IBD is seriously that bad, this operation will change your life, I promise you. 100%. 150, 60, 70, 80, 90, whatever. 100%. It will sort you out. It will make you feel 10 times better. So what that you've got a bag? Don't worry about it. I, I worry about it every single day. Not gonna lie, but nobody gives a shit. Nobody looks. Nobody asks. You can, you'll get through it. I did, and I was the kid that got bullied at school. And if you're one of those people that bullied me, well, yeah, I don't care anymore. Because what have you gone through to make you a better person? Nothing. Well, I don't know that, but I know for a fact that people that used to say mean things to me now have respect for me. So, if anything, that says something. Some, uh, anything. It says, it says that it was a bad op. A big op. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing at all. Ever. Don't ever feel ashamed. If you've got an ileostomy, tell people. Because otherwise they're going to see it. Or you might burst or something. And then you've got to explain it then. So much more embarrassing. So much more. Tell your friends. They would know anyway. Just do the right... It's not the right thing. Do what you want to do. Just stay strong. Even if you've got colitis and you've just been diagnosed. It doesn't mean this will happen to you. I promise you. It does not mean you're going to one day end up with a back. It doesn't. Because so many people with colitis and Crohn's get controlled by medication. I was just extremely unfortunate that nothing would work for me. So, that is my ileostomy. That is my story-ish. If you want me to go into more detail about it, then I will. But I will need more time. I mean, this, this was sort of brought on over a couple of days. Um, so, I thought I'd just sit down with you guys and just talk about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit emotional now because um, I feel like I've got so much off my chest. 
but yeah, um, yeah. So to end this video off, I'm gonna quickly talk about ulcerative colitis. <laughs> How's the stoma team giving me a little phone call just to put me in for Monday? Um, because I'm a little bit sore, obviously my skin's trying to get used to it all, so. Um, yeah, as I was saying, um, I was going to end this video off by talking a little bit about um, my ulcerative colitis I had. I don't even know if I say if I have or had, um, but basically it is a condition that affects thousands of people, UK, USA, everywhere around the world, and it is a horrible condition which affects the bowel. Um, it basically what happens is you have things called flare-ups and things called remission um, and you basically a flare-up is obviously when it's all inflamed um, and you can't do anything it's excruciatingly painful you're constantly on the toilet because your bowel is trying it just doesn't know what it's doing it's like a big mess it's just horrible um, and then you get a thing called remission um, and where you have some time away from flare-ups and your bowel is essentially normal now the difference was with me I never got this remission I just had flare-ups for four years constantly um, which was horrible I mean horrible so um, yeah that's pretty much my time with colitis um, it wasn't amazing um, some people are really lucky and they have it really good, but for some reason I got, I, it demolished me, like, I put on so much weight, I mean, you can see in this video, like, I used to be like proper lum, you know, I've lost so much weight, um, because I'm not on the steroids, I'm not, I'm back, I'm back with my metabolism, blah, 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 blah. that's all gone, it's all there, it was all gone, and now it's all back. So, um, if you do have a IBD disease or condition whatever you want to call it then don't be afraid to talk about it um, if you do want to message someone um, that's not going to judge you then feel free to message me on my Instagram um, I'll drop my Instagram below and you can all come and give me a follow and you can all come and ask me any questions that you want there I'd rather ask there than on my Facebook uh, main reason is because my Facebook's more of my personal thing um, I don't really want my YouTube if you like to get onto my Facebook too much. Um, I do post my videos on there but that's because I've got quite a large following on my Facebook through friends and family so if friends and family share it then I do get more views. Um, but yeah, um, it's not an easy thing um, and I did get a couple of questions because I did ask for questions but unfortunately no one asked me any but I got two. Uh, one of them is completely operation unrelated and the other one is operation related. The first question that I got was from Matt. Uh, Matt was in my going to buy an MX-5 video um, and people liked him in that video so this Matt, 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 this is to answer your question buddy. <laughs> yes I do fart. Uh, it goes into my bag and it sort of goes like in there. Uh, you can hear it uh, but sometimes it does it quietly. It just sort of goes you don't hear it. <laughs> but sometimes it like proper gives it. Normally when I'm eating, which is not nice for anybody. So, uh, yes, I do fart. And yes, it just goes into the bag. It doesn't come out anywhere. It just fills up the bag. It doesn't smell. It's just there. And then when I empty it, it just comes out. Same as when you sort of go to the toilet sort of thing. Um, and then the second question was, what is my dream car? Now this is completely irrelevant, um, and I did want a few more questions like this, but I didn't get any. My dream car is actually a Toyota AE86, uh, and they're like silly money now, so that probably will never happen, but that is my dream car, I'd love one, and I'd probably 2J it, because why not? <laughs> um, or something along those lines, uh, I wouldn't mind Skyline, but an AE86 is probably my dream car at the moment. I do change my mind quite a lot, but uh, yeah, um, I'm going to end this video here guys, so yeah, if you do have any questions, you do have an IBD disease and you don't want to talk about it to anyone else, then you know where to find me, um, and if this video has 
made you want to ask me any questions and just drop them in my Instagram, just drop them on a comment on, on any post and I'll get back to you guys when I can. Um, but yeah, I'll go back to work next week so the videos will slow down again, but I am trying to get more content out there for you guys because now I can do a lot more. So I'm going to start going to some more photo shoots, I'm going to start getting more things in place and things will be good again. So once again, if you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you are old here, then thank you very much for watching. Thank you for the love and support throughout this whole process. It has been amazing. So make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding dong that notification, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.